Donald Trump has pulled a move on the health care bill that can only be described as Trumpism, <laughs> as from his book, The Art of the Deal. He's walked away uh, like a buyer in a Turkish rug bazaar. Uh, he's gone away because the seller isn't giving him the price he wants. And as he walks away, he looks over his shoulder to see if the guy's running after him saying, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. And that's what he's doing to the House Republicans. Any House Republican today who votes against Obama's and Ryan's bill is voting for Obamacare because that's the only alternative they're going to get. Uh, and uh, Obamacare is dying. It's falling apart. Anybody who is relying on Obamacare for health benefits for the next year or two is nuts. Uh, all of the insurance companies are pulling out one after the other uh, because the worse the risk pool gets, the higher the premiums have to go, the fewer people participate, the worse the pool gets, the higher it goes, the fewer participate. And any insurance company that hangs in there with that death spiral uh, is looking at bankruptcy. So they're all pulling out and there'll soon be a situation where when you have Obamacare, nobody will honor it, nobody will cover it because there'll be no insurance companies to deal with it. And Trump is basically saying, I'm not going to fix it. I'm either going to kill it or let it do its thing. And by the time it's done its damage, it's probable the Democrats will even want to scrap it because they're de facto denying insurance to anybody uh, because Obamacare will no longer exist. It also puts the Democrats squarely in touch with what a terrible piece of legislation it was because it will now die on its own without the Republicans administering euthanasia. Uh, but that is a painful experience to put tens of millions of people through, and there is no reason to do that. This bill is an excellent bill, and despite the criticism the media is talking about, Paul Ryan has done a fantastic job in crafting it and in coming close, and I hope over the hill, to a majority to pass it. Uh, what the bill does is what I've been urging in all these videos, uh, is that they have now included a ban on that list of required services that was embedded in Obamacare. And that list of services that you have to cover men for uh, maternity benefits, that you have to offer 60-year-old uh, people um, substance abuse therapy uh, and uh, sex change operations and all kinds of stuff uh, that people don't need and don't want and can't afford. And because they all have to be in the policy, the premiums were outrageous and the deductibles are even worse. But if you give people free choice and you say you can cover what you want and not what you don't and tailor the policy to your specific needs, that'll be great. It'll hold down the premiums. The subsidies required to afford those premiums will be much lower. The incidence of participation will be much higher because you can, get, you can go in for just a straight catastrophic plan. Right now, something that you have to be under 30 to, to get. So this is a great bill. And in terms of the moderates opposing it, they just don't understand that by deleting the list of these required services, you're saving the program. I guess they're afraid that some opponent will run an ad and say, Congressman X voted against requiring maternity benefits. Well, yeah, for men, he did. <laughs> so the, uh, so, so this, this bill is an excellent bill and needs to pass. But more importantly, the question for the Republican Party is, are you a mob or a party? Are you just a collection of critics who say no and cast showcase votes against Obamacare five times a week while you don't control the White House? And then when you do have control, you run screaming from any exercise of responsible power? Uh, I would condemn in the strongest terms any Republican that votes against this bill. It's a great bill, and frankly, the future of the party is at stake. Now, we have a few minutes before this bill's voted on. It's going to be voted on later today. So please call your Republican congressman and urge him to vote yes, uh, particularly if you're in one of those districts where Republicans are on the fence. Uh, at thehill.com, you can see their whip count. The real crime that needs to be investigated by the Intelligence Committee uh, or by a special prosecutor is the leaking of confidential highly classified government documents by members of the Obama administration with a deliberate intent to discredit, confuse, muddy the waters for either Donald Trump the candidate or Donald Trump the president-elect 
or worst, Donald Trump, the, inc swear the incumbent sworn in president of the United States. You know, we have all kinds of leaks in Washington. Ronald Reagan said the ship of state is the only one that leaks from the top. And those leaks usually are intended for individual purposes. Uh, some staff member wants to do a favor to a reporter so that he can get a favorable write-up in the paper. Uh, another staff member is unhappy with where administration policy is going, so he does a leak to try to drum up opposition to it and move the policies. Uh, another person feels he's not getting enough credit, and <coughs> he feels he's due the credit, so he cries on the shoulder of a reporter and it makes its way into the media. Those are all bad, many of them are illegal, uh, but they are nothing compared to a systematic, deliberate campaign by almost a dozen members of the national security intelligence community of highly classified information with the goal of driving from office and diminishing the credibility of the president of the United States, their nominal boss. For example, the phone conversation Flynn had with the Russian ambassador, which I regard as completely harmless and fully appropriate, uh, they leaked it. Uh, and uh, it destroyed Flynn. It destroyed his ability to serve the country. It hit the Trump administration just as it was getting untracked. They leaked the this dossier, this horrible collection of lies and filth that had been amassed by a, Brit, a former British spy. And they leaked it so we get in the media again to embarrass and humiliate the president of the United States. This is not some episodic leak uh, that stems from some fit of personal pique or jealousy. This is damn close to treason and a coup d'etat, and that's what needs to be investigated. These guys are on the government payroll and have taken an oath to upheld the government and the Constitution, and these leaks are a direct violation of that. Lately, I've had occasion to do some research on Putin and his biography, and I am struck by the extent to which Joseph Stalin and Vladimir Putin, two ultimately became dictators of Russia or the Soviet Union, had very similar paths to power. Uh, Stalin was regarded really as sort of the uh, one step above the, the custodian at the Communist Party headquarters. Uh, he was the guy that set up all the chairs for the meetings, that arranged for everybody to be invited, that made sure there, were, uh, there was vodka available, and, uh, and played very little role in party deliberations, except to sometimes keep the minutes and the notes and that kind of thing. Uh, Putin, uh, at the start of his career, uh, was the guy nobody ever heard from. He would never say much. He would be the deputy, he rose to the rank of, in effect, deputy mayor of Leningrad, at that time St. Petersburg, uh, essentially under the, under the guidance of a, uh, a more prominent party member who served as the mayor and got all the attention. And Putin rose quietly in the ranks of the uh, civil service called the nomenklatori uh, in Russia uh, until he ultimately moved to Moscow and again was a very minor, unassuming, quiet member of the hierarchy. Uh, Stalin was in a similar situation when Lenin was casting about for someone to be a successor. And Lenin faced uh, Trotsky, who was uh, the violent, stormy guy, uh, and uh, various other leaders who could have assumed power, dogmatic ideologues. And Stalin just seemed like a guy who would go along with him and do what he needed and uh, was always very helpful, Johnny on the spot, always arranging stuff for him, and uh, ultimately won Lenin's confidence. Uh, Yeltsin, who had taken power in uh, 1991, 89 and then 91, and re-elected in 96, uh, was nearing the end of his term and the end of his health. It was clear that he had to retire. And he was looking for someone to keep in place the democratic reforms that he had adopted and the privatization. And he turned, didn't want an ideologue, didn't want a communist, but he wanted someone the Duma, the parliament, would ratify because uh, Russia had become a democracy. And uh, Putin was unassuming and quiet, and the Duma kind of came to trust him. They kind of came to rely on him in much the same way Lenin did on Stalin. 
and uh, just as Stalin designate, Lenin designated Stalin as his successor, Yeltsin designated Putin as his successor by appointing him prime minister. So, and, and in a way they were physically similar. They were both short, uh, unassuming physically, uh, not bombastic. Uh, Putin was a moderate drinker, Stalin a heavy drinker. But still, the similarities between these guys on the way up was absolutely fascinating. And then, of course, each one turned savagely on his mentor. Um, uh, Lenin, Stalin kept Lenin and his wife in, a, in virtual imprisonment, uh, although not officially so, uh, sidetracked his influence and reversed most of his policies, particularly the fundamental idea that the Politburo, the governing body of the party, would not be subject to terror, no terror against party members. You could use terror as an instrument of policy against anybody outside the party, but in the Politburo, it was all based on reason, rational argument, and logic. And Stalin, of course, ran roughshod over that and had most of, it, most of them killed. Um, Putin, on, on the same token, reversed many of Yeltsin's reforms, uh, scaled back and virtually eliminated democracy in Russia and got to an autocratic rule, eliminated the free media, uh, the, the freedom of the press, and uh, really led to the current dictatorship. Those parallels, I think, are very interesting.